Alright guys, this is a quick tutorial on how to do any percent speedruns. Uh, what you need to do is, this is the, you need to first go into your settings, have these settings, so have, this is the perfect settings for this section, press RB, this is the perfect settings. This is personal, you can have whatever you want. You can have this, whatever you want. Turn this off to offline, and then the rest don't matter. Make sure you're always launched offline, and make sure you're offline in Steam as well. So you don't get invaded by NPCs and being forced to quit out. Have mouse sensitivity to zero and then change your key bindings. Have left alt as the walk because you'll be walking once in this speed run. You want run on left, dash on down and jump on right. And that's pr pretty much it. You make sure gestures are off if you're using your back button to split. And then have these settings whatever you want usually auto best auto detect best rendering settings is off that's the best setting now start up the game i'm going to put some sound on just had it off so you could hear me properly while i was talking about the settings start your split now if you'd like to it doesn't go obviously because you've got the live split timer make sure i've got two videos before this video i've got a how to get started with dark souls free speed running which you should watch before you watch this video and I've got an all bosses tutorial which is interesting to watch if you fancy doing the all bosses run so give them a check make sure you uh, start assassin and then make sure you start black firebomb and then pick your character and start up so assassin and black firebomb are the starting items starting class and starting item start spam start here so you skip the cutscene and hold B at the same time so you're sprinting as soon as you come out of the cutscene now I'm going to explain something that I explained in my All Bosses tutorial, but I'll explain it again here for people that just want to do any percent. Make sure that you look at your weight ratio in the top right corner. If you go below 30% by taking off the helmet and the chest, you'll get a further roll. So let me show you what the roll is normally. See this? This distance? So I'll start this message sign and I'll roll. Oh, my bad. Start this message sign. And I roll. Okay, this is where I end up. Now let me show you what happens if I go below 30%. A little bit further, you see? Now the reason why we do this is because you save about 0.5 seconds every time you get a roll with underneath 30% because you get further distance. When you're going through areas where you're dropping a lot and you're just going to be rolling a lot, you want to be at 30% so you get the furthest roll, so you're making the furthest distance. The other weight ratio that you should concentrate on is... 70% so being below 30% you'll get the longer roll but being a, above 70% you get a fat roll and your stamina doesn't regen as fast as it should so they're the two weight ratios you need to focus on so run past here pick up this item here you'll never be hit here run here and then run to the left of this guy when he shoots his arrow now something you need to focus on it's very important is your stamina never let your stamina go all the way down because look what happens if my stamina goes all the way down, I'll show you now, show you again. If it goes all the way down, you carry on holding B, your character will have to wait until the stamina goes all the way up before you can start running again. Now, if you wait for it to go all the way down the bottom, but stop just before it depletes, like this, you can just start running straight away again. You don't need to wait for it to go all the way back to the top. You can just stop and start your running all the time, as long as you don't fully deplete it. So that's something you need to really focus on as well. Make sure you're never depleting your stamina all the way down. Otherwise, you won't have control of your sprinting. And you'll just lose a lot of time waiting for your whole stamina to regen when you don't need to. So look here. There we go. Perfect. So now you want to equip Black Firebombs here. And you're going to be fighting Gundyr a different way than you do on all bosses. Because the parry, the uh, stagger timings of Gundyr have changed on the Elder Patch. So first thing you want to do here. You want to hit five hits parry, four hits, get behind him, two hits, and then parry, firebomb, repost, one hit, firebomb, one hit. Now let me show you an action, and again this is a boss, I, with my tutorials I stress that bosses are something you need to practice, alright? Now this fight, you want to use the same technique, with the other fights they're a bit different because there's too much RNG involved, but this fight... Same thing every time. So let me show you. Okay. Five hits. One, two, three, four, five. Parry this attack. 
Wait for him to do an attack that you can parry. One, two, three, four. Get behind him here. One, two. Now you want to parry this attack. Wait for him to do an attack. You want to throw a firebomb. Repost. Hit him once. Firebomb and then repost again. No, one again, sorry. Hit again, there you go. Dead. And that'll be the same every time. Now I have a tutorial on this and it'll be in the description of the video. So you can watch that back if you want to fully focus on how to do this fight efficiently. And this is another thing that I'm going to show you. Quitting out on doors. This is what we do to save time when opening doors because this game is measured by in-game time. So when you come up to this door, you want to press start, left. Like as soon as you open, start opening this door, press start, left, A, LB, A, left, A. Now this takes a lot of practice to get in a rhythm and make sure it's fast. So let me show you how fast you can get it when you practice, okay? So this is... This is relatively fast, okay? Just say you're on a door, you're opening it up. I'm not doing this very fast right now. See how, this is what I used to be like. Okay, now this is what it's like after I've played the game a lot and I've practiced. It just takes a lot of practice to do this and you just need to focus on it. So get on this door and quit out. So this stops the in-game time, and you instantly load back in. Super quick load in. It doesn't take much time. You, honestly, it might be about the same speed as the door opening anyway. So you load back in, doors open, and you lose no time. Now another version of Quit Out that we use, I'll show you again on this guy, similar to my old boss's story if you've watched it. If you see these guys here, they've spawned in over here, okay? Now they're going to follow me. See this guy's followed me? The other guy might follow me in a minute. See, they've both followed me. Now look what happens when I quit out. When I quit out, I'm going to split now because I should have split when I killed Gundir. But that's something you need to do in your own preference. You decide when your splits happen. Choose when you want to split. So I've just split now. Maybe you, you would split when you get to Firelink. But I split as soon as I've killed the guy and I quit out, which is the most normal spot to split. Because the time's very consistent. It doesn't move when you're in the menus. So that's when you want to split. So when we load back in, the mob is going to be in the exact same position that it spawned in. And it's not going to be aggroed on you anymore. So if I look here, these guys aren't aggroed on me. They're not saved in their same position next to me, and they disappear. So we use this to reset mobs in certain positions when we're in trouble. Now let me show you what you do when you get to the fire link, okay? Come here, roll when you get to about here, fall down. Come here, and now this is where you want to buy from the shop, okay? First thing you want to do... Um, there is a different technique here. You can light this bonfire. You can roll down here, light this bonfire, then run to the fire li fire lady. But I prefer to roll, talk to the fire lady, then go on there, and then go up. I, I don't know. I just think I prefer anyway. But you can come here, go to buy, and what you want to do here to do the fastest menu in that you can. You don't want to go all oh, all the way over to fire bombs like this. No, that's not what you want to do, right? Because you need to buy fire bombs and a prison stone, the fastest way to do this is because you start on this side of the menu, you want to press down and then left. So that's two inputs to get where you want to go rather than one, two, three, four. So what you want to do is down left, buy one prison stone, go left, buy three fire bombs, and then what you want to do from here is press up. So you go all the way to the bottom of the menu, press up. Up, left, and buy this large leather shield. And there you've bought everything that you need, okay? Start to run towards here and place in the coiled sword. So right now you can equip stuff that you need. So just say these Estus. Instead of having the Ashen Estus, put the firebomb there. So now you have the firebombs equipped. It's because we're going to use them now. The reason why we, we're going to use two of these firebombs, but you buy three for a certain reason, and I'll show you why. So you run up here. All the way up here and out here now I'm gonna quit out just in case I mess this up so I can show you what it's supposed to be like but I'm just gonna come out here and make a save file just so if I mess this up I can reload and show you guys otherwise if I mess this up I'm gonna have to restart the whole tutorial so there's a lot of things in this run that can can mess up or lose you the run but 
it's just something you'll get used to the more you run the game. Now what you want to do here is you want to do a, a firebomb that you throw, a very specific firebomb that you throw. So now I'll show you the spot that you need to be in when you throw this. So you come outside here, come here, and you'll notice there's a step missing right here, right? This is my spot. This is the perfect spot. What you need to do is put your left, left foot in the top left corner of this hole, basically. That's perfect positioning. You can do this, put your foot on the step. It will still work. This position has a lot of places that you can use. So what you want to do here is come here, put your foot in this hole, left, left side of this hole. And now what you want to do is position your head so it's in between these two pillars, okay? So you see this? That's my head perfectly in between the two pillars. Like there's a hole here, right? In between the... There's a pillar there and there's a pillar there. And I put my head dead in the middle in, so it fills the gap. Now, that's wrong. See where my angle is around? That's wrong. That's wrong. You want to have it so your head is basically covering the hole. So that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. You want that. Just to be specific, okay? Now what you need to do here is tap very lightly like that so your character turns. You don't want your character to move forward. You, it can move forward and it will still work, but you want your character to just turn, okay? And from here, what you need to do is just tap twice and throw the firebombs. And this will hit a lizard on the other side. See? One, two. Lizard's dead and I get the twinkly and titanite. Looks very flash in a run, but when you practice it's pretty easy. Especially if you lose my use my lineup that I just used. Now from here, there's a certain skip. As soon as you've thrown them two bombs, don't wait to see if you've killed it. You will always kill it from if you use this correctly. So as soon as you throw them two bombs, start running in this direction up this tree. So now what you need to do is you need to run up this tree and jump at the right time to l land up there. Now let me show you. What you do is do that. But what you need to do is you need to go from... You can't go straight like this. That won't throw you up. What you'll do is you'll just be thrown against like an invisible wall. Or you'll go down like this. What you need to do is you need to find the correct angle. And this takes... All it does is take practice, okay? Pretty much like that. You just want to run... What you'll do is you'll throw these bombs, which are here, right? What you'll do is you'll come up here. Da-da-da. Land in this spot. Throw your bombs. Bang. You've thrown your bombs, right? That's happened. Not from there. That's the That's the wrong spot. When you come from here to here, bang, you're looking left as soon as you throw it. And what you want to do is you walk up a little bit and then you can just sprint and jump off from here. It works pretty much a lot of the time. It's just practice. Like I haven't done this in months, and a month or so, any percent. But when you get the practice down, you get this skip quite a lot of the time. It's That's all it is. So just start doing practicing of running and jumping up here. This is just a nice little skip onto this roof. And yeah, from here, go here and pick up these homeward bones, okay? Now what you need to do here is get out your staff, run across these railings here, here, spam A, so you skip this dialogue. Oh, you don't want to do what I just did. I just fell off. So that's something so easy that can happen. You can just slide off. You need to be very careful when walking along these railings. Something, something that, again, is just going to take practice. I mean, I'm falling off. But if you fall off, you can just quit out, skip this dialogue again. Pick up this Esther Shard and sprint back to this spot, okay? When you get here, cast Spook, okay? And while you're casting Spook, you can go in your menus while it's happening. Now, you see this menu? You don't want this menu up because you can't see yourself. Sorry there, I had to go. So I'll show you guys what you need to do here. You want to use Spook. And on this part, when you use Spook, you can open up your menu and you can do anything you want here, okay? So you can drop stuff or use stuff okay while you're using spook now you don't want this menu to be up like this because you just can't see anything so right click on so click on your right analog and it will disappear okay this is the same with this screen that's why i don't have all this when i'm running and menuing so when you're running and menuing it's something you want to do in this run right click so then your menu isn't showing up and you can see yourself okay so this is a quick this is why we use the fire bombs okay when i press on my inventory my prison stones are right beneath me so i can just press down once if i didn't have this fire bomb the prison stones would be where my black fire bomb is and i wouldn't i'd have to go all the way i'd have to go down left to get there instead of just going down which is super easy all right now let me show you what you do you want to cast spook go to your prison stone drop it go all the way across and then drop your last leather shield as well now when you drop these two, you're going to get two twinkly titanites. And what you want to do is, like I said, you cast Spook, go in there, drop them both, 
And as soon as you pick them up, spam A so you skip the second animation pickup. Spam A. And usually you skip the second animation pickup, walk off, and then quit out as soon as you land. And what happens here is you're going to... It's a spook, thing called spook quit out. And what happens is when you spook, drop down to somewhere, and then quit out as soon as you land, you don't die and uh, you just spawn down there instead. Now straight away, when you finish landing here, you've got three Twinkly Titanites collected, but you haven't got the sword to equip it. You haven't got the Anru sword that you need. So what we'll do here is we'll rest at the bonfire, spam A, and we'll make our way to Harwall Lothric. Now again, this is another door that we need to quit out on. So as soon as you open it up, instantly quit out. So again, it's not going to be as quick as I do it there when you're first learning this game. There's no way your menuing will be as good as mine when you first learn in this game. My menuing, I'd say my menuing is the best out of the speedrunners just because I've practiced so much on it and I've always been used to clawing. So it, don't be disheartened by thinking, oh, my menuing's not fast. That Just menu practice as much as you can and you'll get used to it. it it's just something you get used to by training your hands. Uh, so here, what you do is here, run up here. You want to drop down and roll this direction. Now, instead of just picking this item off, uh, picking this item up and then uh, walking off, what you want to do is you want to sprint and grab the the item right as you're about to fall, and you'll skip the animation. I might not get it here, but I'll try my best to show you. See, so there you go. You skip the animation of picking it up, and you drop down. So you skip that animation. It saves like a second, but it's really nice and clean. So walk to the right of this guy. Wait for him to shoot. Dodge left. Dodge right to sh dodge this guy. Stay to the left so you can get past this. And then roll any attacks from these guys. Because they're kind of annoying. Stay to the left of this door and then strafe right so you miss this guy. Sometimes you'll have to dodge, but most of the time you don't. You can just walk by. But if he doesn't attack, you stay left and then roll right, okay? Now, from here, what you need to do is come over to this left, and the spook quit that we did earlier, do the exact same thing here. So walk off, and quit, as soon as you land. When you hear the scream and you've quit out, that means you've got it. Load back in, and make sure you pick up this item right in front of you here. Pick this item up. Now, in this little run here, what I can do is I can go to my menu, and I can equip items while I'm running. So this is something you need to get used to as well. So, walk through here, go to the right of this guy, you might have to roll his attack, he did, and strafe this guy. That right guy you can always strafe, the first guy you might have to roll. So what you'll do when you're running, something important, is you need to menu. So, if you look in the description, you'll see how to hold your controller when you're speed running. that's a video that I made. And it's made for people with Xbox controllers, but if not, just type in claw, claw grip on Google and you'll find out this is, this is the way you want to hold your controller. So when you're running, it's usually you menu when you're running in a straight line and you've got full endurance. You don't want to menu right, see my endurance, you don't want to menu right now because you'll lose your sprint and you won't be able to redo it. So what you need to do is you want to wait till you're like near full endurance and then start opening your menu and menu before your endurance goes all the way down. You usually have a lot of time. So what you want to do here is you want to equip your gold pine resin and homeward bones. So your menu looks like this, okay? Come here. Now this lady, right, you can kill her very easily. What you want to do is put two-handed sword. Make sure your hands two, you're two-handing your sword. Walk over, throw one black firebomb, and then do two charged star twos. One, two. She's dead. Okay, pick up her item. And now from here, as soon as you pick it up, you want to just quit. As soon as you've picked that item up, and you've picked this item up, look what happens. There's a boss. You want to heal just before and then quit out. You want to heal usually right after this tr boss fight triggers. So then you have full HP ready for the next boss. As soon as you quit out, as soon as Dancer spawns in, what happens is you get sent straight outside her boss room. And that makes you be able to run straight to Vault. Gives you a little bit of a shortcut. And later on you need to trigger Dancer because later on you're going to be skipping right over the Dancer fight. Okay, so we're going to come here, and I'm going to quit out just to show you guys this fight. Make a save file in case something goes wrong. Don't do this in the run. You're not allowed to use save files in the run, obviously. But 
I make save files for practice, or you can make save files like now when I'm making a tutorial to show you guys what I'm doing in case I fuck up. So what we come up here, we walk into this fight, and what you want to do is just put on this gold pine resin as soon as the fight starts. And you're going to want to spam R1 and stay very close to his belly. Alright, so come here, stay very close to his belly. Show you a technique. One, two, three, four, five. Stay very close. You can strafe that one, it won't hit you. One, two, three, four, five. Stand around the back of him now. One, two, three, four, five. Now let him do one charge, two charges, and then the last charge here, and roll backwards so you're closer to him. Now spam R1 until he's dead. Nice. Now as soon as he's dead, run over to this door and quit out. As soon as it, as soon as that writing comes up, that's right behind the menu, quit out. And then now I split. That's when I usually split for Vault. Now you've killed Vault and you've killed Kundir and you've got most of your items that you need so far. Now let me show you the next thing to do. You're gonna run, start running towards Anri. Now this is important. We're going to start running towards Anri, but before we go to Anri, we're going to want to speak to some lady called Arena. Now, Arena has a very, very interesting uh, miracle that we want to use. So what we'll do here is we'll start running past these. You don't need to go get them uh, skulls. We can just run straight towards Arena. So keep running. Have your staff out because you're going to be using that in a minute. Run through here and to the left of this guy. And now you're going to want to quit on this door up ahead because this guy blocks the door. Sometimes he doesn't, you can get past, but it's very rarely. So you want to come up here and then quit as soon as you get to the door. Now load back in and he shouldn't block the way. Sometimes he can run and block the way instantly. All you got to do is roll and then press R1 if he does that. But other than that, no worries. So just run past all this. Roll down here. On this patch, I get a lot of freezes, like a little frame freezes, but Trust me, this this patch has very shit optimization, and you're gonna freeze. So what you want to do here is regen your stamina. Come here, regen your stamina here. Let this guy attack and then roll and stay to the right of this guy and jump right over here. Now as soon as you get over here, you're gonna want to run, get your stamina back up so you can use the stamina to cast spook. Stay to the left here and then cast spook. Jump off. Stay here on the left. And then jump off again. Straight through here and go through here. Stay to the right so this rat doesn't aggro. And then go straight up this ladder. And you have no problems. You have infinite spawning rats coming out here. Look at this. Lovely. Uh, they stopped coming. Feels bad, man. So what you want to do is come here. And this lady, you want to spam A on her. There's a lot of talking. Stop spamming A right now because all she's doing is, look, I'm going to give her a little touch. But I missed her completely. Spam A again. Spam A until she disappears. There you go. Now run through here. You'll get a feel for when she disappears, where you can walk away. Run up to this door. And again, as soon as you open it, quit out. Now we're going to go to Anri, who's a very fun customer. But before that, what we're going to do is we're going to cast Spook right here. And we're going to walk to this elevator and spam B so we don't get stuck. So just spam B so you roll. If you don't roll instantly, what's going to happen is you're going to get staggered and you're going to lose. You're not going to be able to get down the elevator in time. So now come here and you're going to want to pick up this item here. Pick up this and stay to the right of this guy. Roll if he doesn't attack. Sometimes he does a charge that you can just sprint and you won't have to roll at all. Which is really nice. Get on this door and then quit out. Now, there's a lot of quit outs in the early part of this game, but as soon as you get later on, there's not many. This run's pretty short, so it's not like the longest run in the world. Now, this is where things get really exciting. I'm going to sh tell you about a glitch that happens on this game with on any percent. On any percent, if you're below 30% and you're playing as a female, only a female, your character will take double the damage. Now, you're saying, why don't you play as Mal? Well, the thing is, if you play as Mal, there's a certain skip that fucks up, I think. I, I seem to find that if you play as a Mal with a certain skip, it doesn't it doesn't happen. It doesn't really happen 100%. If you play as a female, it works, which is very strange. So, what you want to do for this part, because you can take a lot of fucking damage at this part, 
put your helmet on so you're above 30%. You won't get a longer roll, but you'll be safe. So it's very important. I'm going to make a save file here because you'll see how dangerous this can be. This part here, very dangerous. And it's kind of scary, to be honest. So what we'll do here is we'll come to this edge and we'll just walk off. Roll left. And you want to stay to the left here, then roll to the right. Dodge that dog. See, now I've got bit, and i got bit again. So now, look how dangerous this can be. The dogs are the most cancerous enemies in this game. There's no enemy in this game that is worse than a, a dog. Seriously, I'm 100% serious. Dogs on this game, they teleport. They teleport and they bite fucking hard, okay? So what you need to do is not die at this part. It's very hard, but... It is a bit scary, this part. This part's probably the most scary part of the run, if I'm being honest, in terms of getting past an enemy without getting absolutely destroyed. So, again, fall off here. Cast Spook if you don't want to take the full damage, if you're a little bit scared. Oh, didn't hit me there. Spam a little bit of rolls if you're scared. Now, watch this. The dogs might teleport. And they, must, they might just chase me all the way. Or they fall off the edge. Okay, brilliant. They're not chasing me. If they're chasing you, quit out as soon as you get to where I am right now. But if they're not chasing you, you don't have to quit out and you can just grab this bonfire, okay? Now, Anri. Oh, this guy's going to chase? No, he's not. Okay, they never chase you, really, these guys. The dogs are the only things that can really chase you down here. If you're a bit worried, you can like, heal, heal here or grab the bonfire. Depends how low or honest you are. Now, here's a little trick with Anri, okay? It makes her chase you every time, okay? I've got two souls right now, and I've got one ember, uh, one, uh, two embers and one soul right now. Now, if this guy chases me off the edge with Anri, right? If, she, if he chases me off the edge and dies, I don't need to pick up a certain soul. But if he does chase me, doesn't does chase me and doesn't die, then I need a certain soul to get enough souls. Now, I haven't got this soul. Now, let me show you where this soul is. Okay, I'll reload a save point. Just to show you what you need to pick up. And if you're lucky, you can skip it. But it's really not worth the time. I was just showing you basically what you can and can't do. So let me show you where the actual soul is that you should get. If you're coming through this area, what you want to do... When you're going past this wagon right here, okay? You're going to want to pick this up. So you're coming from this area up there. And you're going to pick up this soul right here. And go straight towards where the dogs are again. Obviously these guys won't be aggro in an actual run. But right now they are because I came back through. Now now you've got this soul. You can go back down and get the dog. Get the uh, tome that you need. I'll show you again how scary the dogs can be. Usually they're a little bit cooperative. But most of the time they're just assholes. See if they teleport. No. Okay, brilliant. Okay, now you can hear the dog chasing me, okay? He just teleported. So you want to quit out as soon as you get here. So perfect. I showed you what happens if the dog chases you and what if he doesn't, okay? Now, you light the bonfire after you get down here. The bonfire's already lit because I showed you earlier. So make sure you grab that soul. You need that soul because this guy most likely isn't going to fall off and die. It's a bit of a time save if you pick skip that soul, but it literally is about three or four seconds to grab it. So just for safety, grab it. Okay, now let me show you a strat on Anri, okay? What you need to do is have your fire bombs, your black fire bombs equipped, two hand your S stock, and stay so. Usually you want to hit both of them with this, so then maybe he will die and give you the souls, but. Mainly I just try and hit her. I don't really care to hit him. Hit them tw two times. Two, R two charged R2s. Run over here. Cast Spook. And as soon as it finishes, throw a firebomb, okay? Right at her. Now sprint around here and run straight to this spot over here. What, what you don't want to do is what I just did. You don't want to roll off like that, okay? Now what happens is if you run off too fast and don't turn around, your character will just completely slide off. And let me show you what happens if you don't do that. What happens is she chases you and she runs after you, okay? So come here again. Charged R2. 
Carry it on with the second one. Go over here. Cast Spook. Then throw the Firebomb at her. And then sprint. Get your shield out here. It's usually better to have a shield here. Turn around quickly and hold your shield up. Now she'll sprint over to you. Sometimes he will troll you. Sometimes she'll troll you. But she'll fall off and she'll die, okay? Now, if you can kill him, it's best to do it. As soon as you pick this up, bone to fire link, okay? Run away from uh, that character because he will fuck you up if you don't. So pick up the Anri sword and bone straight back to fire link, okay? You've killed Anri, now I can split because she's dead and I've picked up the Anri sword. Now, this sword is super OP for this patch. It combines with luck and it combines with bleed, which is something we're going to get later. So what we're going to do from this point onwards is we're going to run straight to this lady here, this good lady. And I'm going to sell two embers, uh, the vault soul, and I'm going to sell this soul here as well. It's worth 800, the one I went back for. Now as soon as you've done that, run straight over here. And what you want to do is you're going to upgrade your Anri sword. And you had the Titanites from earlier that you threw the fire, you threw the firebomb over Firelink, and then you went upstairs and you traded a firebomb, and you traded now you traded a prism stone and a shield. So upgrade your enemy sword plus two. Come down here, and what you can do is usually upgrade this Estus, and perfect. Upgrade the Estus once and start running over here. Okay. Now when you run over here, get ready. Make sure you've got your homeward bone equipped, and come here. And straight away, get in this menu, purchase the ring, give her the tome, go to learn miracles, press down, left, and buy the tears of denial, okay? So now perfect, I've got 300 souls left. I wouldn't have enough souls if I didn't pick up that, that soul by the wagon. Now as soon as you finish the dialogue, and the homeward bone stops being black, if if it's black and faded out, then don't don't click it or you'll scratch your asshole. You need to just wait for the dialogue to stop and wait for the bone to light up again. Press X and then bone straight back to fire link, okay? This will take you straight back to the bonfire that you need. Now from here, straight away, equip your ring. You've equipped the ring, okay? As soon as you've got equipped it, light, rest at the bonfire. Go to a tune spell. Now, unequip Spook, okay? You don't want Spook in the first spot. But what you can do, instead of unequipping it, go straight here to Tears of Denial, equip it, then put Spook in the second slot, okay? So, that's what it usually looks like. So, click A, A again, and then left like that. So, this is what it usually starts off with. You can just do that, and, and then do that. But I think that's slower, so what you want to do is, this is what it starts off as. Press A, right, A. Right, left, A. So then you got Tears of Denial in the first spot, Spook in the second slot, okay? Now from here, come off this, and then straight away, you're going to want to warp to the Halfway Fortress. Right now I don't have the Halfway Fortress, because I forgot to pick it up when I was doing the uh, Anri kill. So I'll show you again. Just go through this section again, it's good to show you anyway. I'll undo the Anri slit as well so you can see. Just to show you guys what to do, you want to grab this bonfire, make sure you grab it. And you're going to want to have the firebombs equipped. Charge star 2. Charge star 2. Come over here. Cast spook. Throw the firebomb. Change it to shield. Sprint to this spot. Turn around. Now here comes Anri, full sprint. She hit me. But it's fine, she'll die. Pick up her sword. Get away from this guy. And then bone to fire link. So that was a lot cleaner than last time, but that's what you want to do. Now from here, again, you want to run straight over here. You want to sell all the souls. Sell the ember, the two embers that you picked up. Run over here. Upgrade the Anri sword twice, so once, twice. Go down to reinforce S stock, reinforce it, run straight over here, make sure you've got your... You should put Anri Sword on here, so that's probably the best thing to do while you're running. Make sure you've got the Homeward Bones on, spam through her dialogue, purchase the ring, give her the tome, and then buy Tears of Denial. Wait for this to end, wait for the Homeward Bone to light up, and then straight to sh the Firelink Shrine. 
So that was just a quicker version of me showing you everything that I should have done, okay? Put on the ring. Go here. Equip this. Equip this. And then straight to halfway fortress, okay? Now when I go here, Horace is still going to be alive and he's going to run straight after me, okay? Be a little bit scared of this. I'll show you guys what to do. He won't go near you, but just don't be slow, basically. You can split now. That's when you'd want to split because you've just done all the menuing. That's why I have a split there. Run away from Horace. Now, what you want to do here is you want to have Spook here. Okay? Have Spook there. Put your staff on. Run here. Right? I'm going to quit out because I'm going to show you what you want to do when you get here. Now, this is when things get a little precise and this is where the game starts to get broken as fuck, okay? <clears throat> this is when the game is completely fucking broken. You're going to want to come to the right of this rock, okay? This rock that I'm going to put my left foot on. You see it? See this rock? Put your left foot to the right of it, okay? Now, what you want to do is make sure when you're looking over here, there's a black hole where my head is right now, okay? If you've got a certain amount of brightness, you can see it. There's like a little black hole where my head is perfectly on right now. If I move my head, you'll see it. Like a little shade, basically, a little shadow. Now, what you want to do is you want to have your camera. So you know where the center of your camera is, right? So that's where the center of my camera is, where my head is. What you want to do is you want to make sure your head, <clears throat> you want to make sure your camera is pointed just to the right of that shadow I'm talking about. You'll notice, like, so there, right now, the center of my screen is on the shadow, you see? If I do there, the center of my screen is to the right of the shadow. And that's where you want it, okay? Now hold Alt, which is the walk button, and hold left on the D-pad as well. Not the D-pad of the controller, but your keyboard. So press left on your... What you want to do is hold left Alt first. So I'm holding left Alt right now. And I'm going to hold left now. Perfect. I landed exactly where I want to, okay? Now quit out as soon as you land here. Now, as soon as you've, you've uh, landed here, quit out, and you're going to load back in. And when you load in here, what you want to do is you want to kind of probably have this Estus on. If you're not very good at this skip, this is like a safety tool, this Ashen Estus. If you need more Ashen Estus, then a lot more Ashen Estus, but most likely just have one on you. Now, turn around here and face this wall. Now, what I do is when I face this wall... There's these sort of white patches in the wall. There's three of them. If you look here, you can see all three of them right in front of my head. There's one patch right where the top of my head is now. There's another one where I've just covered it with my head. And another one where I covered it with my head again. Now, this is just going to take a lot of sort of learning where the landmarks are. So if I turn here, I know exactly where I want to be. These three patches that I'm looking at. One exactly where my head is now. One exactly where my head is now. And one where my head is now again. So these three patches is what I use to work out where I'm walking. So I walk forward on my D-pad and I slide into a slot. As soon as I slide in here, I turn my camera this way, okay? Now, this is how I do my lineup. If you look in the bottom right corner, <clears throat> you see my where my soles are, okay? Now, where my soles are, there's a the left side of the bar, okay? Like, just say I use my HP bar, I use the end of it. Now, with my soles, what I do is I use the left side of that. And what I want to do is place, you see the symbol for the souls? I want to place that on top of this white patch on the wall. There's two of them, okay? Right now, my soul patch is just on the right of it. I want my soul patch to be dead on it. You see that? Perfect. That's on the right of it. That's dead on it. You can use your mouse for this. Just make sure your camera is the, high, the lowest point it can. So hold down. As much as you can on the right analog so your camera is locked in a certain position so you can't get the the uh, up or down wrong it's always perfectly all the way down and you want to have it so again that soul is perfectly on that white patch so this white patch right here that's too much right that's too much left okay it's perfectly on that white patch zoom in uh, full screen it if you want to watch it perfectly okay now what I'm going to show you is another glitch now tis of denial I can't use right now I can't use it because I haven't got enough levels for it. And I haven't got the right uh, like chime for it, okay? Again, line up your camera properly. Now for this glitch, what I'm going to do, I'll show you the actual, my character doing the actual glitch, okay? What you want to do is have Spook as your item. 
Now what you're going to do is you're going to press LB, LT, and up on the D-pad. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold all these buttons at the exact same time. But there's one button that you want to do a little bit earlier than the rest. And this one is the LB button, which is L1 on the PS4 controller. Now you want to smash these buttons down and hold them all. And what you want to do is you want to hold them all. And you want to hold them all until the animation is complete. I just do this to be safe, okay? And you want to do, when you press the L1 button a little bit earlier, you're going to want to do this like 0.2 or to, to like 0 0.4 seconds quicker. And when I'm saying this, I mean 0 0.4 seconds. So it's not something you can just do. You can't just go, I'm going to press L1 first and then press the other two together. It's a lot of practice of getting the right buttons. And this is something you're not going to get first time either. I got it first time in the world record. And then I got it fourth time in the second skip that you do later on. So it's very hard to do and it takes a lot of practice. Now let me show you. To push them all together, this is what happens if you accidentally press up on the D-pad too early. Your character shakes his stick, okay? Now, he does that. Now what happens is you can't try and do the skip again. You can't try and do this glitch again until he stops shaking the staff. Now to stop this, what you want to do is walk your character to the left or the right and it will reset the shake so look if you look oh, I'm in a really bad spot right now I didn't want to walk right there if you walk right here you'll get stuck in a spot make sure you do not walk right there because the thing is my camera angle will not be like that in the actual run the way you want to actually cancel it is you want to when you walk into this slot like I said you look at these three things here walk forward on it you slide in when you look here and you've got up your second spot that's that's when you're going to want to do the skip okay but you can't see your character. You sort of see him shake if he does it wrong. So what you want to do is you want to walk forward like that. So you won't ever fall into this spot. You want to walk forward like that and then walk back in again. And that's how you reset it. But I'm not going to do that because it completely ruins where your lineup is. And most of the time you want to get this or wait for the shake to finish. Usually in this spot I usually wait for the shake to spin it finish because it's a bit scary. Like I said you can get stuck in that spot that I showed you. Now push them all together and you want to try and get this within like 10 times. If you don't get this, you're going to run out of FP and you're going to have to use this Asher Nestus. Now if you do this, perfect. If you see the gold thing right like that, that means I got it. There's going to be a tutorial in the description of this video going really in depth with this glitch. But what happens is if you get that lovely gold staff, that means you've got it. Now from here... What you want to do is you want to hold left alt again, so you're walking, and you want to hold forward, so left on your keypad, or your keyboard, sorry. So hold left, and hold left alt. And you want to do this, you want to hold left alt first, and then walk forward, and, and don't let go until you land at the bottom. So walk off, don't let go. Let go now. As soon as you've got to, away from the wall, you're safe, okay? Now walk to this part of the wall. And wait till you see these two little dots. You see these two white dots below my gold, shiny, lovely torch that I am right now. These two white dots. And you see this wall as well, okay? See this like wall in the distance just below me? What you want to do is you want to run against this wall until you go under it exactly in that spot. Perfect, okay? Now start running towards this direction between... There's like a left wall here and there's like a really thin wall you're about to see. Or you can't see it in the video right now, but you want to run in between this, okay? And while this is happening, because your health is all the way at the bottom, an Anri Sword is a weapon that heals you for 2 HP every time, every second, okay? Now watch this glitch. Look at my my HP now, okay? Now look at this. When I <clears throat> when I unequip and equip an Anri Sword as much as as fast as I can. You see this? If this happens. Look at my health now. It really regens your stat health as quick as it can, okay? You can also run and do that with the right D-pad. That will do it as well. But you mainly want to be running and just spamming this while you're running, okay? Just like this. So that's that out of the way. Start running. When you get through this gap that I just walked through the, with the left wall and the right wall, you're going to want to start running. See this massive bridge? You're going to want to start running to the left of this. You see there's a soul in the distance right there on a human body, if you see it, just above my torch. Start running directly towards that, okay? As soon as you get there, start, keep running, keep running, keep running. 
As soon as you start running towards this soul, the area is going to load in right here. As soon as you hit this wall. Perfect, alright? Now you're here. Now, you see, before this all loads in, you're going to want to run against this wall. And while you run against this wall, it's going to lift you up. See how I just got lifted up as soon as I connected to this wall where the vases are? Make sure you get lifted up, and then you can walk across here, over here, and then through this gap. You won't be able to get through this gap unless you get lifted up like I just did. So as soon as you come through here, look at this wall here. This column. It's a little bit sloped. You need to light this bonfire, but you can't light the bonfire unless you lower your height. So what you want to do is you want to walk into this wall right here. So you get lowered. As soon as you get lowered, start walking over to the bonfire. Boom. Light it. Lovely. Now, as soon as you've lit this bonfire, you need this bonfire because you're going to come back here later and fight watchers. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to skip watchers. I'm going to walk all the way over here. And I'm going to go straight through this window. Lovely window. Go a little bit wide here. Basically, follow this video. And while you're doing the skip yourself... Do it a few times, do it like, do the skip ten times and watch this video and just look exactly where I go, okay? And then you'll learn the route yourself off by heart. Walk up here, it's going to say Farron Keep. As soon as you get to this part of the rocks, walk right around them and then walk in here. And what you want to do here is you're going to get a little bit of height. So walk to the left here and then come back around this wall. You've got a little bit of height on you now. So what you're going to want to do is run over here. And you see there's a wall right here, this little rock, there's a little wall here. What you're going to want to do is walk in for, into this for a, few, for a second, just so you load an area later on. So if you walk in here, put your feet on it, you see a little, you jump up a little bit, and in the distance, you see all them lights are now lit up. You've loaded in the next area. So you want to stand in here for a second, then run out here, and wait, run a little bit wide. And you see with this tree, now start running to the left of this tree. Just over here, perfect. Now start walking so you're going down the slope. Now run, 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 run. All the way down. You see there's a tree to the left of me here. What you want to do, run a little bit past this tree until this little pointy thing on my left. You see this? It's all pointy, this part right here. Or this rock. You can decide what you want to use, but I use the pointy bit there. Get to about here, turn around. And you'll be at the exact perfect height to go straight under here. Now, while you go through under here, keep running, keep running, keep running. Get pushed down here. Go around this rock. See this rock? Go around it. Go under here. And perfect. You're at the correct height. Now, start running a very long distance. You're going to run over here. And while you're doing this, you can just spam and resort and just heal yourself up. Lovely, lovely. Keep, keep spamming and spamming. And you're going to keep running in this direction. I run towards this cloud here. It's like a white cloud. The, fur the furthest left white cloud. I start running in that direction. You can see it right ahead of me, this white cloud. You're going to have to really pick your landmarks when you're running in here. Because that's the only way you're going to really know where you're going. Now position your camera so you're facing this direction. But still running towards that cloud. Now keep doing it. Keep doing it. And you're going to see this ray of light. See this ray of light? And there's like a little black dot. Or a little black thing on the floor on the left of it here. If you look really closely. Start running towards this black dot. And now as soon as you get past this black dot. There's going to be a bunch of smoke that starts spawning in. See this smoke? Start running over this smoke. This is the direction. Now this is the landmark you really want to use. That little message there. And this smoke. Start running to this smoke. And start looking over here. Now this is where it gets technical okay. There are four... Five lights that you can see lit up, okay? Two on the left here, one here, one here, then one there. Now what you're going to want to do is, them two torches on the left, just count them as one. Count that one as the second one. Count that one as the third one. And count that one as the fourth one. Now you're going to want to run parallel to the third one. Now this third one is exactly where you start running this direction still. Run across the ash that is below you, the smoke. And aim towards keep running and what you're going to see is this torch the third torch as soon as you get to this third torch like in line with it start walking this way okay now when you're walking this way what you're going to see here you're going to come perfectly parallel perfectly straight up to the corner of this wall here and you've you've walked just to the right of this third torch okay 
Now, start walking. You see this smoke? See, there's two bits of smoke. What I use is them bits of smoke. I want to run right towards the smoke, okay? Now, while I'm running towards the smoke, I get lifted up. So this bit here is exactly where the ashes are that you need to pick up. I run just to the left of this smoke. So if I go back in my spot where I'm coming from, what I did is I come from this area, like I use the ray of light, and I look at the smoke. I run past the smoke. I look at the third torch. I run just to the right until I'm about straight with it, or just a little bit to it past it. Now start running right and look at this smoke. Now you want to run, like I said, to the left of it, just to the left of it, and you're going to go straight to these ashes, and you're going to want to pick these up and then split. Pick up these ashes and then turn around, and you see this ray of light that you've been using? Start running to it, and make sure when you're running to this light, you're going to the left of it. You want to stay to the left. You don't want to go straight to the ray, because if you run straight to that light, your game is going to crash, and it's an unavoidable crash, and there's literally nothing you can do about this crash. I've noticed there's this, this crash, not many people know about it and why it happens. But if you walk towards this light, you'll crash dead on as soon as you walk towards it. But if you stay to the left and walk in, I've never crashed, okay? Stay to the left and just walk. Don't sprint. If you sprint in while it's loading, I, you do get a crash. But I've never had it when I walk in. So stay to the left. You'll see smoke on the left here if you have a really good brightness on your video right now. But you want to stay to the left of this ray. That's what I mainly use, okay? Keep rotating left of it. And as soon as you get to the left, the furthest left of this ray, you're going to want to start walking towards it. As soon as you start getting to the left of it, now walk in. Do not run in. And you'll load in like this. Now start walking up the ray. Start walking up it. As soon as you get to the top of it here, start walking this direction. Keep running and walk through this wall. Now, this is where Warnir's fight is, and you're going to want to walk straight over it. Just walk straight over it, and you'll get a little boost. As soon as you keep walking over here, keep running in this direction, okay? Now, this is perfect. You've done the skip, pretty much. You've done the hardest part and the scary part. The hardest part is grabbing the ashes and using the landmarks, and the scariest part is the crash. Now, run right under this part of the rock. The lowest part here, you want to stay to the right of it. Walk through here. Walk under this part of the stairs and boom we're on the other side of the rocks now walk into this corner up here walk into this wall a little bit and then run towards this part of the stairs and you'll get straight up okay walk around here and then grab this bonfire boom you're at and you've just skipped watchers and wall near perfect now how do i get towards yom could i quit out and go across the bridge no because you haven't killed deacons yet now let me show you a glitch Run over here. It's a long ass run, okay? You might still need to be healing with Anries because you need full HP before you get to this roof, okay? You can use Estus, but it's really worthwhile just using your Anries sword as much as you can rather than the Estus, okay? So do that while you're doing the skip and you'll get used to it. It'll take a bit of practice, but what you need to do here is run straight towards this roof, okay? As soon as you get to the center of this roof, where it's the pointiest, right here right in the middle you want to run across this top of the roof now make sure you're not too far left and make sure you're not too far right and make sure you're in the middle of this railing or you'll slide off when you load back in get in the middle and then just quit out and you've done wall near skip so i can now skip i can now split sorry now what you want to do here is you're going to want to roll off the roof towards the right if you've got full hp you don't have to worry okay you'll always live as long as you've got <clears throat> below a certain amount of uh, weight ratio. So roll off here, walk off here, and perfect. You're going to go straight towards this bonfire. Now you're right at the distant mana bonfire. You've skipped having to kill deacons and you've skipped having to do a lot of the other stuff in Irafil. So we're going to light this bonfire and what you're going to want to do here is you're going to have enough, you're going to actually have enough uh, FP. You're going to have enough FP, so you won't need to use the Ashen Estus usually, but I've, I'm have i going to have to use it because I didn't do the teardrop skip well enough. So you can either rest here, or you can use the Ashen Estus. Now I'm going to rest, just because he gives me full HP and full FP. You don't need to rest here, it's just optimal to not rest. You can rest if you want though. 
Now run over here. Jump across here. Stay to the left so this guy doesn't hit you. If he tries to hit you, you can roll like this. Just roll that attack. <coughs> Make sure you've got armor on here because he can do a really annoying attack that destroys you. Run through here. Now, you're going to have to quit out here. So load up your quit. Make sure you're ready to quit before that guy loads in, okay? And then quit as soon as you reach down here. Now, you can't avoid these uh, invasions. You're always going to get invaded. So just quit out as soon as you get here, pretty much. That's the, that's, that's the only invasion you need to quit out for. So make sure you quit out there. Make sure you ready up your quit. Because if you're not ready to quit, you won't be able to quit. If you're not in this menu before he invades, then you're going to get invaded. You, you can't just get invaded, then go to quit. or it won't Because it won't let you. You need to be in this menu and then quit out as soon as you reach to the bottom. Okay? Now, as soon as that's done, make sure you're below 30 because you want the longest rolls at this part. And you're going to want to run this direction, okay? Keep running. Keep running. Pick up this because you'll need it later. Open up this gate. Use spook. Jump down, keep running. Now you're going to want to quit out here. I'll show you where. As soon as you land here, quit. Perfect. Another spook quit. Hello everyone. Welcome back. Because I fucked up my splits. So my splits are completely fucked now, but it's fine. Carrying on from here. What you want to do is stay to the right of this little bit pillar and what you want to do is stay to the right of this guy sometimes he doesn't attack that you can just walk past but this one i'll have to roll so roll this and then go to the end and what you want to do is cast spook here so you wait for him to do this charge and then walk up here and quit out as soon as you land if you, do, you have to wait for him to do that charge sometimes otherwise if you go straight to trying to go through that skip you'll just get hit and die so cast spook pretty much here just so the fireball hits that. Run towards here with below 30%, roll, and then roll again, and then roll again. Sometimes you get slid off like this, but you wanna be as close as you can to the edge when you roll off. Come up here, and you're gonna to wanna, to... you don't really need to heal. <clears throat> you don't really need to heal to fall, but it's probably, might be worth doing and putting four armor on if, I don't know if you survive a hit actually, but I don't know, I don't heal just because it's a waste of time, and if I get hit, the run's over anyway. But you can manipulate this fight really easily. So what you want to do here is run for his legs, go straight to the Storm Ruler, pick it up, and go back through it, and equip equip it. You want to stay near his legs here, you don't... So, uh, sometimes he stamps like this, which is kind of annoying. What you have to do is just bait an attack out, and then charge up your weapon. And then you'll have to bait out, dodge this attack, and then attack... So what you do now, if you, oh, okay, I just got a headshot, if you get a headshot, it staggers him, so you get like a free hit. As soon as it's charged up, let go, so you can regen stamina, and then attack again. And now stay between his legs, you want to stay like just in front of him by his legs. Do an attack here. That's unlucky. And just keep manipulating this attack from him. So I got a headshot, so I'm safe, and I can just get another attack off. Perfect. Change to Henry Sword, and then listen for the boom sound. Okay, the boom just went off, all right? When you hear the boom sound, that means you can bone back to Firelink. You'll, you'll know when you practice this game. You'll hear the boom sound after the boss. You have to get used to it. So whenever you start hearing these boom sounds, it means you're safe to bone back. So sow your soul, give ashes, buy four bo four Carthus Rouge and four bones, and then come here and level up 28 luck. Exactly what it says in my splits, so I don't forget it, and it's really simple. Just sell souls, what you do every time, uh, give ashes, and then buy four Carthus, four bones, 28 luck, go to back to the Firelink Shrine, and then bone back. Uh, walk back to Irrafall. Now, I picked up Distant Mana Bonfire earlier. You don't need to do that. And it's better not to do that because you save a lot of time. 
Now what you want to do here is you want to see this white rock just on the left of my foot. I'll put my foot on it now just to sort of show you where it is. That's where my, the rock, white rock is. And I want my foot just on the right of it, okay? So just like that. And I place my head in line with a white rock in the distance. I put my head on it right now. And look, there it is above my head. Now you can't see it. You can't see the white rock that I'm using. Now you can. Now you, now you can't. Now you can. So you want to line it with that white rock, basically. And what you want to do is sprint and jump off at the last moment. And you'll land here. Then walk forward a little bit. And then quit out. Now when you load in here, you're going to have to do the teardrop again. Now this might take a few tries, and like I said, if you fuck up, you can position your character as a sort of turn and you'll get another go at it before your character like starts swiveling his uh, staff. So again, try and press all three buttons together. And what I do is I line my head up with a certain rock. Uh, I'll show you in a minute after I get this. See if I can get it. So turn your body if you don't get it. So there you go. Now I've got it. Now line your head up with this white rock. I'll show you again. My head's in the way of it. Now tap forward. Just tap forward very slightly. So when you tap forward, you'll just slide off. You need to keep tapping and tapping and tapping. And you'll land exactly where I am. And you'll be safe with the uh, tears of denial here. Now you start spamming enemy sword because you're going to want the health for the next part. Because if you get hit by a bow... Uh, an arrow, sorry, then you're going to get absolutely destroyed and die. You won't die, but you'll lose your Tears of Denial. And I'll show you what can happen if you lose your Tears of Denial later on. So come through here. Go to the left of here and roll through the barrels. And roll again just before this guy on the floor so you don't get hit. And then go up these stairs. Keep spamming Anneries while you're running. Make sure you learn how to do the claw grip. Something very important. It might hurt your hands at first if you don't already do it, but it's just something you get used to over the time. So come to the left of here, keep coming round. Behind this coffin on my right, see there's a coffin just on my right now? You can grab a undead bone shard there if you really want it for safety reasons, but you don't really need to. Run in this direction, past this tree, and this area is going to load in. Now let me show you where I go to get enough height for the next area. I come up here, and this last pillow, the, the one just just before the end I get just just here exactly on this part of the pillar and it's just the second from last one before the wall and now that's where I came from and this is exactly where I want to be just this height so now start running this direction put all your armor on and do not run too far left here if you run just through this left bit take a shortcut you'll die your camera will flip or you'll die now stay to the right of this part here don't go to the left, stay to this part of the right. And what you'll see here is a little wall loads in. See this wall? Stay between this wall and this wall and run through and now you can go as far left as you want just to cut through this part. You can walk through this little wall here, this little pillar, but I'm just going to go around it. You can go through that though, just that one there. Walk up here, up towards these stairs. And when you get up to the top of these stairs, you're going to want to stay to the left so you don't get hit by the arrows, or you get less chance of getting hit by the arrows. You want to be always kind of be sprinting when they're shooting, or they won't hit you if you're always sprinting. See, like that, he misses me. Get some height here. Well, that was a close one. And then get some height on this one. Go all the way to the top of this one, in the middle. Just so you get enough height. And be wary of arrows here. This is where arrows can hit you. So I walk against this wall so he misses. And I go exactly where that landed, up this wall. And roll. You want to roll this if you hear them arrows because they're going to destroy you. Now, you can walk up this part here and you're going to lose all your health. So that's why you don't want to use the Estus because it's just a waste. So this is where you go. You lose all your health and you can come up here. Now, if you lost Tears of Denial, instead of going up this pillar that I just went up, this pillar right here, when you go up, you'll die if you don't have Tears of Denial because you might lose it while you get hit by an arrow or you might lose it when you land. In the distance, what you want to do is go from the bottom of this pillar, and you see that pillar in the distance behind, just go all the way to that, the one right behind it, and go up to that way. So now we're going to go up these stairs. This is the normal way. Come up these stairs and stay to the right as soon as you come off this uh, elevator. Here we go, here. And what you want to do is keep spamming enemies because you want as much Estus as you can these next few parts because it's quite a long run stay to the right here and this guy will always miss you okay you want to stay to the right just keep sprinting and he'll miss you every time and this guy you want to bait an attack at and then roll it and you'll be safe 
Might have to roll a second time if he does a follow up, but you'll be safe. Come to the left here. You need that height on the steps that I went on. And then you want to come to this left here. Now keep spamming and put on your bleed. You don't need these fire bombs anymore, so put bleed on. Take off the fire bombs and put palpine resin on. Now you want to go three quarters of the way up these stairs and let come off. And look who's there. The hardest boss in the game. Put Carthus on when you start to run out of stamina near the boss. So you regen your stamina, and it's 36 hits, I think. So you want to try and regen your stamina to 5 hits every time, because that's the maximum hits you can do with this stamina. I think just below the FP is what you want. Just keep hitting him. So just below the FP maximum, that's where your 5 hits will be. Keep going. What you're going to want to make sure is that you've got enough stamina when you finish your last hit on Aldrich so you can start running. So there you go, I've got stamina so I can start running. Now start spamming Anneries again and run towards this direction. And you can pop Aldrich's soul here. Uh, I'm not going to, I think I can heal. Oh no, you can't heal, you can't heal on this part. So pop Aldrich's soul. I didn't get it in time, but. That's when you want to pop Aldrich's soul, when you walk into that corner and you wait to be teleported. So, use that. You can't use Esther's there, it doesn't let you. Because you're being teleported, the game doesn't want you to use any items in the, in the menu, because you could use the bone. So, what you want to do here is you're a right outside dancer. Come up these steps, turn around, follow these statues along here. And now follow this railing. Just follow it up. So, you want to follow them statues, and then follow this railing, like there's a wall there. And you'll start gaining height. Turn around when you reach the top by the statue and start walking back to where you came from. And you want to, on the left railing here, on the left railing, you want to just come up and walk. You can run up here, but I'm showing you slowly. You'll gain a little bit of height. That's what you need, okay? Now walk towards here. Don't go through the right. You won't, I'll show you. You won't go through the right here. Go through the left. There's no wall. They didn't want to give you one. They didn't want to load a wall there. Now walk over here and this will look familiar. Look who that is. Lovely. Fuck you, Dancer. I don't need to fight you, bitch. Eat my firebombs. I'll give her another one, actually. I think I've got another one. There you go. Hmm. Fuck you. Alright. So walk... I'm going to pop this soul because I should have popped it earlier. Now, you can keep spamming Anneries, or you can just heal up. You can use one Estus here if you want. Just You need full HP for this next area. Now, stay to the left of these, this railing here. This railing's a bit finicky, so stay to the left here. Be a bit careful and walk up here. Now, perfect. You're on the way to Dragon Slayer. Now, I try and get as much armor as I can here. Uh, I think this is wrong. I'll, I'll show you what happens if you don't have the correct armor when you're running through this area. So, come through the right here. Regen stamina. Come to a bit far to the left and then turn to the right just here so he doesn't hit you and keep running. That guy will always jump and miss you. Now, let me see. Okay, I'm going to try this with just the chest and the legs. I'm pretty sure I'll lose Tears of Denial. I'll use this so I can show you Tears of Denial. You want to be below 30% here and just roll, 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 roll. Okay, look, I lost my Tears of Denial and you become, you don't have this torch anymore, you see? Now, the reason why I lost my Tears of Denial is because I don't have the correct armor on. What you want to do here is actually take off Anri's sword and you want to put on another piece of armor and you'll actually not lose your Tears of Denial and you'll survive. So, you would put the, would you put the hood on or would you put the arms on? What you want to do is you want to take off Anri's sword and then you want to put the arms on because the arms have way more defense than the head. Now, it sounds weird, but that's true. Like, I'll show you the stats right here. So, let's try it. Head, hands. The hands have way more defense than the head, the hood. But if you look at the fire defense, look at the fire defense. The hood has way more fire defense. Now, that's what you're going to want over the hands because they have more fire defense and you're rolling through fire. So what you want is this layout, the head, the chest, and the legs, because it's got more fire defense and you're rolling through fire. So when you come back through here, put your Anri sword on and just stay with the same armor. You want to stay above 30% through these next few areas because it's really scary. And you, if you're below 30%, like I said, there's a glitch where you take double damage and you really don't want to do that. It doesn't really work on the uh, fire, so that's why you go below 30%. You just roll through that. 
because you're constantly rolling, you're not going to be counter hit. If you're sprinting and you're below 30%, that's when you take the double damage. Not when you're just below 30. If you're sprinting, it counts as a counter hit, but not with any other thing. So walk up them steps and come to the left of Dragon Slayer. Look at that. Lovely. Hey, Dragon Slayer. So you want to walk across like I did. Just follow this video and while you're doing the glitch and just follow it so you learn exactly where you're going. Make sure this is what your menu looks like and just come to the left here through this gap. You can go to the right of this thing here or you can go to the left and then just walk up towards the bonfire. And you're actually going to want to grab this bonfire. You can rest if you're a bit worried with your Estus or... Yeah, if you've got no Estus here, just rest if you're worried. It takes four seconds, so it's not bad. Grab these and then open this door. Now, you don't want to quit out on this door because if you quit out, you're going to lose your Tears of Denial. Now... Because you're not a torch anymore, you can't see where you are, basically, but you can make a guess. It's When you start learning where the centre of your screen is, you start to realise where you are. Like I said, it's just practice and you'll work out. In a minute, you're going to put this Palpine Resin on. So come to here, go to this guy. Do not go to the left here. Go to the right. If you go left, you're going to gain height that you don't need. Don't walk on this little ledge. Now go to the left of this pillar so you don't see the lizard, and then put on Palpine Resin. Now you're going to want to stay to the left so he doesn't aggro, and then come here... Hold RT, one, two, three. Perfect. Now come up here. This is a bit. This is a new strat that I found for any percent. This guy can fuck you up, right? So go to the right of him so he twists the wrong way and he starts attacking. Go to the left of this lizard. One, one, two. And you want to do the third attack. If you do your stamina better, you'll be able to do that better than I just did. Come up here. As soon as you get to these stairs, turn around and start walking in this direction. Come up here, and then come through here. Heal up again if you're a bit worried. I'm going to heal up because you can die really easily. This next section is really sketchy without uh, without health. Come next to this guy, run through the left, and then turn right as soon as he starts shooting. Go past this guy, he'll never hit you. And go up these books, straight up them. Then up this little la uh, light, bit candles, watch out for that. Come through here, and then what you want to come to is this little circle here. Right to the right of it, and walk over. You have to go to that little circle, little sort of pillar, and then walk over it. Go to this door, and then push yourself down against this. You'll, no you'll notice your camera lowers. As soon as it starts lowering, start walking in this direction. You can go through there, or cut through here. It depends. Don't get any height on the statues, though, or you'll ruin it. Pick up this soul, because you need it. And then watch out for this. This can be really sketchy. Jesus Christ. If you die here, then you're going to go really far back. And you're basically your run's basically over. You can carry on, but yeah. Now activate this elevator, then bone back to Firelink. Now, that is a lot. I just showed you a lot of stuff. All the way from Irafil. So you just went all the way through Irafil. Congratulations. Watch this video and follow exactly where I go and learn exactly these, all these little things that I told you about about being below 30% having certain armor on now you're thinking oh I need 40 luck can I just level up right now no you, you don't want to just go to her right now you won't be, have enough for 40 you'll get 38 which is not good enough you need 40 luck to start procking bleed a certain way so come here sell your soul that you just picked up and then you don't need to buy anything go level up your anri sword to plus 3 if you're super, super like uh, peachy, not not peachy, but if you're worried, you can allot your Estus. So I'll go back. You can allot your Estus to five. So you can have five Estus if you need it. So here we go. Now I've got five Estus because you're not going to be using the teardrop anymore. Come here and then now get your 40 luck. So there you go. Perfect. 40 luck. Def dead on. And now bone back. You can burn that undead bone shard that you might have picked up if you're a bit peachy. Or you can just go straight to Grand Archives. So go to Grand Archives and then split as soon as you, this uh, loading screen comes up. There you go, perfect. And now go towards Princes. We've got f two more bosses and one joke of a boss, basically. So let's see. This boss is the hardest boss in this run, for sure. Uh, it's called Nems Tier Princes in these splits because my fight, like... Uh, loads of people say Nems tier princes, so I just started using it as my splits. Loads of other runners call it that because I've my princes fights are usually pretty good because I've practiced them like insane amount. And literally, all you need to do is just practice and practice, and you'll get it as well. So what you want to do here is run through the middle, and as soon as you get to this ending bit, go towards the right and stay as far right as you can, or these guys are gonna fuck you up. See, so like they'll try and hit me, they miss. 
Now these guys, sometimes they buff their swords, look, just like this, right? If they buff all oh, the free buffs, if they all buff their swords, you just walk through for free. But if they don't, you have to dodge them. Now quit out on this door. Now if you need to dodge them, you just practice and you'll get you'll uh, just make a save file just before them and just keep practicing running through that area and you'll understand what attacks you need to roll and if you can just run through. Now what you can do here, you need two bleed. So come into this fight and you can use tears of denial, but that's a bit peachy. So come in here and put bleed on straight away. And now you need to learn this fight, okay? He's got two openings here, one really quick and one like this. Keep locked on, like keep locked off when you're coming around him here and stay behind his back. And you want to learn exactly what attacks you can strafe, like I just did there, and what attacks you need to roll. And you also need to learn how many attacks it takes to stagger him. And when you learn that, you can just play around this fight easily like this. You see this? I'm just strafing behind his back and I'm basically destroying him. Now, after... After you've got him staggered here, you can heal up if you need to. But what you want to do is put bleed on as soon as his face starts, okay? Use another bleed and just dodge this. Stay locked on when he teleports. When he teleports, you want to just stay locked on so you know exactly where he goes. But stay locked off for the rest of the fight. That attack hit me, but it's insane hitbox. Keep rotating around him like this. Just manipulate him and heal up if you stagger him, maybe, if you're a bit worried. And just keep strafing and, and learn this fight. You need to practice exactly how you can strafe him like I am right now. And look at this fight. This fight's perfect if you can strafe like this. You just need to learn exactly how you fight this boss. Now listen for the boom sound again and bone as soon as you hear it, okay? Listen. Boom. Done. Now... One more boss and one fun boss. So come on this fight, this bonfire and go straight to Farringkeep Perimeter. You're going to go left and then down. Left twice, down once. Now this boss is super... I hate this boss, but it's really easy actually. You, you destroy him, but I hate it just because it, it's a bit... It reads your inputs and it's just... I always choke on it because I'll be on a good run and then I just lose a lot of time every time. So come to the right here, stay to the right. Now this is one of the few times I'll stay below 30% because a longer roll here is really good to have. See, that guy ran away for some reason, but having a longer roll here for these next guys here is very important. Because look at this, they really go for you, but if you get a long enough roll, you get away from them. If you can, quick enough with your menu in, put your armor back on. And then load in and fight these guys. What you need is a gold pine resin that you've got still from earlier. And uh, just fight them. This is kind of annoying, but you need to roll their first attack and then just press R1, pretty much. So I can, that's all the advice I can really give on this fight. So roll this attack and then just press R1. And you need to know when you can go aggressive and when you can't. So here you want to roll back. And straight after this attack, I can go in. Okay, one more hit. Okay, wait. And then now, in between that attack. Now this guy has sketchy as well if you can backstab him that's the best thing you can do let me show you if he does the attack uh okay, that attack's bad okay this attack here move back and as soon as he jumps over you go underneath him and backstab him this gives you a lot of free damage so you can charge r2 and then spam r1 see there you go you've got like all three quarters of his health for free he's going to jump again here with that attack two more attacks and he's dead and you can pretty much bone as soon as possible here, but I wait a little bit because I'm always scared. So there you go. And now you're pretty much done with the run, to be honest. This cinder is a glitch on the last boss. Go below 30% here, and then run up and start placing the souls, okay? So place this soul up here. Make sure your menu is on the homeward bone, okay? That you've got left. Come down here. Now I'm going to show you how you skip an animation here. You can either go in front of it here and place the soul like I just did on the first statue, or... Oh, what's this guy fucking doing here? Hey, dude. Just doing a glitch. I go up. You can place it here, or you can go up here, and if you run off the edge and press A on an animation, you skip it. Similar to gold pine, the gold pine resin skip pickup that I showed you earlier at the beginning of the run. So you could just stand here, really peachly, and press A, and you'll fall off like that. Or you can sprint and jump off like this and press spam A right as you fall off. 
Now, I'll show you the peach version, right? You basically want to walk off so, not like this. You want to walk so your feet are like mid-air, basically, because it saves five seconds. So if you don't take five seconds setting up, you'll save time. Just like this, place the sole and you fall off. Now, let me show you what happens if you don't do that and you sprint off. See that? I perfectly placed the sole there. If you sprint off right at the edge and spam A, you will just place it like that. Now, roll down here and then click A. And as soon as you skip the cutscene, press start to skip the cutscene, okay? Press X on your homeward bone while you're in the cutscene after you've skipped it. Press down and then press A. So you use the homeward bone, vast to, bone to last bonfire, and you'll teleport straight before Cinder. That saves a lot of time, so it's a really nice glitch that you should do. Go on the home, go on the uh, kneel at the bonfire. As soon as the cutscene starts, skip it. Press X down A. Now, this guy he triggers when you run past this rock right in front of me. See this rock? I'll show you relative to where you come in. There's a rock right there, you see it? As soon as you go in there, he'll trigger. Now, what you want to do is you want to run into this corner after you've triggered past that rock. So run into this corner. So you see the way I'm walking up? It don't let you walk up. You need to sprint up. Let me show you, right? If you sprint a little bit, you'll go to the left and fall off. If you come from the left angle, you'll always go up pretty much. So you want to just practice walking, running up here. You can just practice this. But what I'll show you is what happens when you go up to the rock, okay? So you want to go up there, go to the rock, trigger him. Trigger the fight. As soon as he triggers, walk up here. See, look, that's what happens if you fall off. What you want to do again is run up and quit. So I showed you that even if you fail it, you can just walk back down and then just sprint back up. Run up there and quit out. As soon as you quit out, load back in and the run is done. You've completed the run, basically, guys. Just run up to this boss. Take off all your armor because why not be naked when you complete the game? Take off the ring. And then put your bone on, uh, bl uh, bleed on, sorry, and then just spam R1. Again, try and uh, get your stamina perfect. You want to basically put your stamina bar, start pressing R1 when your stamina bar is just below the maximum FP level. And just keep spamming R1, and he's going to die. The bleed will last the whole fight. Well, I quit a fight, but it will last the whole uh, destruction, basically. So you don't do two hits there, you want to do three. But I do four sometimes, because then you trigger the bleed. What you want to do here is walk away, and then roll at the very last... Uh, when the, as soon as the fire is about to go, and you won't get hit. Now keep spamming R1. You can just wait for that fire, then run in, but you can roll into it as well, just at the end. You have to wait. Now spam R1. This is... F I think it's 22 hits, or 23. 23 hits, okay. Now, as soon as your bleed's about to run out, you see, if you look at the sword, perfect. The bleed runs out perfectly after he dies, and now you just light the bonfire, and you've completed the run, okay? Now, as soon as you get to the cutscene, like the uh, credits, just like this, the credits will come up. You can watch them all if you want. I don't like watching them all. I like to see the name of the most evil man in the world first, and then I quit out. So, hit me, Asaki, fuck you, and then I skip it. And then, as soon as you get to this scene, just press Alt F4. So when you press Alt F4, because you've completed the game now, it asks you if you want to go into New Game Plus, just, you don't prick no, just Alt F4. So, that's what your in-game time is now. 101, 11. Okay, so I've got an hour, one minute, and 11 seconds in-game time. Now, load back into Dark Souls 3, like, start the game again. And when you start the game again... Go to load game and look at the final in game timer so it matches, so you can see if it matches up to your live split. It should perfectly always line up to it, but there you go 10111. That's what your in game time was, and now you can submit that to the leaderboards. Alright, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Bye.